and uh, people can roll in um, when they see fit. So uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's uh, great to be back for uh, day two of the um, uh, of the boot camp here. Um, really enthusiastic about working with you today on a set of new material and to advance your projects forward. Um, I, uh, at the beginning of these days, I like to begin with retrospectives. Um, retrospectives that reflect some on the learning from the previous day and um, uh, take, it, uh, take it further in terms of some of the points which couldn't quite be brought out, but which bear emphasis. Um, so yesterday, um, we began the day with a bit of administrivia, but more substantively with um, a set of material which, um, in which I provided a certain uh, perspective uh, on uh, the, uh, the role that, that, um, uh, that human, uh, the data collection can play uh, within the context of understanding human health behaviors, exposures, knowledge, attitudes, and beliefs. Um, and uh, within this context, uh, I highlighted a, um, uh, a, a straddling role uh, played by smartphones uh, between, on the one hand, the physical context of a person, or physical world, a person's circulation in the, in the um, uh, external, external world, um, and secondly, their electronic world or electronic context. And I noted that smartphones um, provide this key nexus between these worlds in as much as it relates to an individual. So that person's view of the uh, electronic world is largely mediated these days uh, by a device such as this for many individuals. Um, their ability to watch Hulu or um, view Facebook updates, to, to conduct Google searches, to use email, or use Snapchat or, or Instagram is all conducted via devices, among which smartphones have promise of place. And Therefore, the smartphone is this kind of key mediator and key nexus for this whole electronic context for the person. In the physical world, whilst they, the person deals directly with aspects of the physical world, picking things up and walking places, the smartphone is used increasingly to understand that physical world. Think you know, map applications, GPS mapping applications, where you're situating your understanding of where you are via outputs on the phone, uh, for example. Or, or applications which note you, which um, uh, let you know about nearby people that you know, for example, um, such as, as uh, with a growing number of applications that use location-based methods. The smartphone, in some cases provides uh, translation of things in the external world and uh, helps, helps us be aware of, of where we are in our relation to the surrounding context. And a growing number of applications make use of what's called augmented reality to actually overlay some information uh, from uh, and, and, and knowledge atop of images of the world. So increasingly there are aspects of our world that our interactions with them flow through the phone, are, are making our way from a point A to point B, for example. But in both spheres, electronic and physical spheres, our ability to navigate is very centrally um, situated within this phone. More than that, the phone has this ability to encounter and sense aspects of these, these world. Where we are, in some cases with whom we're located, how much physical activity we're getting. Again, another thing we often track through our phone, you know, or, or wearables that accompany our phone. And 
the phone has this, by, by straddling into this, this physical context, it has the ability to sense our interactions with it, our travels, our doings and growings, our levels of, of activity in that external world, and if we choose to enable it, aspects of our um, uh, particular day-to-day -day lives, you know, what we're eating and um, the types of exercise in which we're engaged, etc. And in the electronic world, because different aspects of the electronic context flow through the phone, um, say through use of browsers to search out information or uh, by virtue of, of incoming calls or outgoing calls or SMS messages, aspects of, of email, etc. cetera, um, there's an opportunity to use the phone to get a sense of our engagement with this world. Now, this would all be just conceptually interesting were it not for the fact that tools like Ethica can provide us a pulse of what's going on in both spheres. And that's particularly important because what's going on in the physical world has a very material impact on our health behaviors and to some degree uh, our health beliefs. So um, a crumbling set of sidewalks, a, um, an availability of a, uh, of a healthy uh, food environment versus an unhealthy food environment messaging in the external world, uh, in the physical world, um, contacts between ourselves and others um, in which we might engage in imitative behavior or be socially conditioned to engage in certain types of, of uh, behavior that are healthy or, or less healthy. These, these aspects of our physical context um, often have a very big bearing on our behaviors and in turn can be whispered, whispers of them can be captured by the phone whisp uh, by virtue of where we are and looking up um, the walkability of that environment by sensing, for example, other nearby beacons uh, that, that indicate uh, people within our social circle, by sensing our levels of sedentary behavior or physical activity, and by asking for self-reporting on some components. So these factors in the physical world affect us, and the phone provides a convenient way to capture information about that, much of it electronically, some of it through self-reporting. You know, we, we can self-report easily in a lower burden way to the, to the phone. So that's kind of this red arrow going here. At the same time, our activities in the world, our levels of physical activity, our levels of sedentary behavior, uh, our degree of engagement with healthy food establishments versus less healthy ones gives us some indication sometimes of our health beliefs, our health attitudes, um, and, um, and to some degree um, aspects of our health. Um, for example, if we're, if we're down with, uh, with the flu for a while, it'll be it'll be shown in terms of sedentary behavior, in terms of our mobility, et cetera, will be manifested in the physical world. Conversely, in this electronic context, there's aspects of the discourse, maybe it's vaccine hesitancy on the part of contacts we have in Facebook, or maybe it's uh, Twitter-related messaging encouraging us to, in, to engage in, um, in uh, support for healthy eating. That, that may influence our behavior, it may shape our behavior. What we find through Google searches may shape our behavior with respect to misinformation or, or supportive information. So the electronic world also affects us, that's the red arrow going here, but Aspects of our beliefs, our knowledge, our attitudes, and indeed our health behaviors are often indicated electronically too. Whether it's a fitness tracking app on Fitbit or Endomondo, or an aspect of what we're posting on Twitter ourselves, or the images we're, we're, um, we're sending out via Snapchat or Instagram, um, or what we're choosing to watch on YouTube. Often there's clues as to our knowledge, attitudes, beliefs, and sometimes health behaviors 
say with fitness tracking, in the electronic world. So both the electronic context and the physical context whisper to our smartphones about what's going on externally that might affect us, might influence us, but also are indicative to a certain degree about our, um, our situation and beliefs, uh, knowledge, attitudes. So we saw yesterday, um, we got a, a bit of an introduction to, to Ethica, and much of our discussion yesterday with respect to Ethica was focused on two major areas. Ethica is a system which allows us to define, to monitor and refine, and to analyze data from fairly articulated studies leveraging smartphones and wearables to provide insight into health behaviors, knowledge, attitudes, uh, and beliefs. And to do so with an economy of work. So yesterday, Mohammed in front of us set up uh, a study in Ethica. It's something that could be done in, um, in dozens of minutes very readily um, in a way that allows us to then gather information from a person directly through self-reporting. We saw that with surveys yesterday gather self-reports regarding a variety of things. Maybe it's a tick I found in my body or subsequently a rash with buttons I can, I can indicate or that I'm taking my, my uh, dose of uh, highly active antiretroviral therapy. Um, maybe it's uh, aspects of my, uh, of my nutritional intake or physical activity. Um, perhaps it's some aspect of barriers to physical activity in the external environment and a narrative about why that poses a problem for me. So Ethica provides these surveys as ways of eliciting reporting from a person about their knowledge, attitudes, beliefs, context, etc. Um, their health, health situation, often including uh, aspects of health conditions or complaints that wouldn't bring them in to a provider, but which may, be, may have bearing on their day-to-day -day functioning or be indicative of their underlying health state. So maybe it's uh, a bout of coughing and wheezing or a shortness of breath exacerbation of COPD that a physician might not normally be aware of, but, but that a, a, a patient or a loved one caring for that patient might provide to the phone. So Ethica uh, provides this conduit for collecting that information, but it does so in a way that situates that information. I talked yesterday about how big data um, is characterized, um, I think, in a, in a useful definition by four Vs, um, by volume, that's the big and big data, by velocity, it comes in quickly, and indeed we saw yesterday that it's fairly straightforward for a respondent to, to fill out surveys multiple times a day. Um, but we also saw yesterday we can set up these sensors, these, these, these automatically collected information that might collect much information in the course of a day. Very importantly from yesterday's discussion uh, is aspects of variety. So we collect for that same person a wide variety of types of, of, of information. We'll come back to that in a second. And then some of it has greater veracity in the sense that it involves a person context being sensed, for example, where they are with beacons or outdoors with Wi-Fi, or excuse me, with, with GPS, um, uh, in a way that situates where they are uh, in a, in a very precise way. Um, alternatively, they may take a photo of nutritional in, of aspects of nutritional intake or have their sedentary behavior recorded by a wristband in ways that, that lend more accuracy than a, than a summary would uh, a month hence. So here, within Ethica, we can delineate data sources that will quantify aspects of our physical context, physical activity, sedentary behavior, 
aspects of who we're with as measured by beacon to what resources we need, uh, aspects associated with our, our uh, physical location, um, both indoors through beacons or, or through uh, GPS uh, more broadly. We can, we can have data sources that will capture our physical context. We can also have data sources that will capture aspect of our electronic context. Um, uh, most notably things like uh, screen time, things like app use, things like incoming calls, things like outgoing calls or, or SMS messages in both cases. And for some studies, um, it might be hinted at today, um, we have, uh, we've used Ethica plugins, um, an older technology, to capture things like people's browsing behavior, what sites they were going to, what full page contents of those uh, pages that they went and visited that contained tobacco related keywords. And we actually can see from that what searches they're conducting, for example, on Google. So these whispers of the electronic context and the physical context, which a phone can measure, these are things which Ethica is equipped to set up. And today, much of the discussion involving Ethica will be about some of the details of these data sources. What does it mean to collect data, for example, on um, screen state, whether the screen is on or off? Um, what does it mean for Ethica to collect information on GPS? Um, how does that, that work in terms of accuracy? Um, and uh, to what degree can we capture aspect of, of uh, sedentary behavior, for example, through step tones. So, so yesterday's data sources hinted at that. We'll go into that in more detail. But much of yesterday was spent on these instruments to ask questions of a person and elicit information from the person. Mohammed didn't have time to go through the various types of questions in Ethica, but they are legion. Um, so we have questions uh, that are single answer in character, where you pick one answer. Questions which involve multiple types of, um, of answers for a given person. So you might select um, different types of personal protective behaviors in which you're engaged, uh, say for vector-borne disease. So I might list long sleeves, long pants, and uh, a hat in avoidance of high you know, tall grasses and vegetation. Um, uh, and uh, we also have um, questionnaires related to height, where the person can pick their units. Um, up in Canada, we have something called metric, which most of the world has as well. But there are still quite a few people here who use um, the older imperial system, inches, feet, uh, pounds for quantifying things. And um, uh, Ethica provides special questions that allow a person to, to pick what units they would like. Um, it also provides uh, a set of questions which uh, allow for uh, picking a count of things where the, the type of thing that's being picked, like years, is, is indicated, so units associated with things. Ethica also provides multimedia questions, videos that can be elicited from a participant, pictures, audio, and visual analog scales that can be set with uh, different uh, gradations. Uh, it has information questions, which sounds uh, odd, but which can be used to present information to a participant rather than to elicit it. And a couple other types of uh, like barcode scanning, QR code scanning that I haven't mentioned, but are quite useful with consumer products or being able to situate uh, uh, on, a, on a certain resource electronically based on something that they see. So we could scan in, for example, consumer product as by barcode and know, you know, uh, a prepackaged meal someone eating or know about a consumer uh, chemical product, you know, hairspray that someone's using, to know something about the um, uh, the types of chemicals to which they're they're exposed on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so Ethica has these questionnaire types, which uh, we looked at yesterday, or these uh, these question types that can be embedded in questionnaires. And as Mohammed noted, 
There's a variety of types of questionnaires. Baseline, so a study entry, eligibility, to even see if someone's eligible to enter a study. Um, uh, routine, which, which are asked during and uh, throughout a deployment. Um, a study exit, when a person leaves early. Uh, and uh, different questionnaires can be triggered by different conditions. I argued yesterday that this is part of what makes Ethica greater than the sum of its parts, in the sense that rather than just being survey instruments with these automatically collected mechanisms bolted onto it, you know, added on to those abilities as a different sort of feature, they work together. Um, so we can use aspects of what's collected with the electronic instruments of, uh, say, someone's location or proximity to a resource like a service dog or to a prosthetic limb. Alan is doing some wonderful work with um, uh, uh, individuals who have uh, suffered amputations due to diabetic um, uh, peripheral neuropathy and, um, and loss of vasculature uh, function. And, uh, and uh, there you might have a beacon associated, for example, with a, um, a prosthetic uh, limb. He's not doing that in his study uh, yet, but it may be a direction we eventually end up going in a, in a later study. So here, uh, we could trigger, we could use the presence of a resource or a certain context to trigger surveys. Um, and those surveys can then be uh, proximate to a point of concern and elicit information in a lower burden way than if we just asked regularly, you know, about a person. Surveys, importantly, can also be triggered by a button push in a proactive way. And some of our studies, which we haven't presented, um, probably won't get a chance due to the abbreviated nature of the boot camp, make central use of that. They use volunteered information, as it were, crowdsourced information, to elicit information about a community, which is then contributed back to the community. And so there's a community site available electronically for members of the community, and people post items using Ethica, using their buttons to report items which raise community awareness about issues. Maybe it will be vandalism occurrences, for example, so the community is aware of where vandalism is taking place and maybe can, can engage in community self-regulation to discourage that. Maybe it's aspects of physical activities to physical, uh, or barriers to physical activity or support for physical activity in the community. And the community, by reflecting on these barriers and supports, can mobilize in a way that helps secure resources to remedy the shortcomings and extend the benefits. So some of our studies have involved data from Ethica feeding in to a community um, resource that can be browsed more generally by community members and used to help uh, catalyze action. That was some great work by Tarun Katapali at the uh, University of Virginia in the SMART study, which is uh, uh, available in one of the JMIR journals. So Ethica's uh, types of survey instruments um, and uh, question types um, can be used for a variety of needs, some of them externally facing to the study, some of them to uh, work hand in hand with electronic data collection, and other cases capturing aspect of narrative context, qualitative as well as quantitative questions. And Ethica works to leverage the unique power of smartphones to do so in a way that's, that's less burdensome. Um, for example, um, uh, providing a person with the option of, instead of just providing full text, also providing audio. That, um, uh, that provides an alternative input mechanism. So rather than typing a narrative, uh, rather than being restricted to typing a narrative of full text, they can also record audio um, uh, self uh, you know, comments uh, that will uh, serve as a, a different way of capturing that story that they want to convey. So Ethica leverages these, uh, these uh, electronic means of communicating information as well as more traditional um, Likert scale, survey instruments, et cetera, uh, vi uh, visual analog scales to capture um, uh, participant self-report 
and situates that participant self-report by triggering based on conditions, but also cross-linking it with data from that same participant in time as to where they are, with whom they're located, and some aspect of their physical activity or sedentary behavior context, for example, through step counts. So um, that's the, the broader uh, Ethica context. It's a context which is evolving. Mohammed will be talking with you uh, today or tomorrow about the Ethica roadmap and the growing use of, uh, for example, uh, web-based interfaces to Ethica. You saw yesterday the web-based interface for Ethica's um, uh, and I had it up here a, a minute ago, I'm sorry, um, for Ethica's um, uh, interface for defining surveys, uh, or excuse me, defining studies. Um, and uh, these, uh, these studies can be interacted with by researchers in a very rich way. We saw that yesterday and we'll see more of it today. Um, in addition to that, uh, a web-based interface to Ethica for participants is coming, which uh, will allow a rich experience for participants through web-based mechanisms. Uh, Mohammed will be, be talking about that. Um, this interface that we saw yesterday for researchers is one that provides a key, um, uh, a key asset. Um, for uh, learning about, learning from the data that's collected by a study and learning uh, about what's working and what's not working on a, uh, a given study. It allows you, for example, to monitor uh, adherence levels from different individuals within a study, to examine the, um, the survey responses by individuals within that study, both multimedia and, uh, and with more traditional instruments, and to get a sense of where people are not answering questions or where they're not volunteering sensor data in ways that we might reach out to them, both uh, automatically and, um, and via, uh, via mechanisms that are uh, manual, but where we can craft the messages to be specific to that participant. And uh, we saw that Ethica can leverage this broader context to situate some surveys uh, and survey responses. For example, where people are answering uh, survey questions within the context uh, of, of geography, and we can, we can also capture their temporal context. Today, we're gonna to be taking this a lot further. We're going to be going into the data sources that will situate us in both these worlds. Um, the electronic world, things like screen time, app use, um, aspects of their um, uh, ingoing and outgoing calls, uh, et cetera. In the physical world, with things like um, step counts, um, uh, Bluetooth beacon, proximity, uh, GPS location, etc. Um, so uh, that's a lot of the goal for today. Tomorrow, a lot of what we'll be looking at is also uh, on the analysis side with Kibana providing uh, ways that a study can, with custom forms, provide dashboards that will keep the study organizers updated with the progress of uh, the data collection for the study using visualization specific to that study. Um, and this gives us a way of, of having our fingers on the pulse of a study um, and sharing that uh, with, with others on the study team and down the road, um, perhaps with, uh, it, as, as that's a good evolves with, with participants. So that was a bit of a retrospective on yesterday and a bit of a sense of where we're going. Are there any questions that I could address before we dive into today's contents under Mohammed's uh, ABLE guidance. Questions more generally about Ethica, questions about material yesterday, um, uh, questions about the, the broader context for this sort of data collection. Anything I can answer. The day is early. There's, there's tea and coffee out there. Um, so, uh, so um, 
Uh, we'll we'll uh, warm you up. Um, uh, at least I didn't put you to sleep yet. Um, uh, but uh, that'll be for my later talks today. Um, uh, today, we're going to be spending a lot of time on the data sources um, to go to the nitty gritty of what these data sources mean and how they can be used. Um, and uh, this afternoon, I'm going to be talking with you about some of those very important considerations that come to the fore when you're recruiting participants. Um, trying to, to bring them to the, to the table when you're trying to promote the study, to, to, to make them aware of it. Um, and we're going to be talking as well about human ethics side of, of things and, and helping, helping engage in dialogue with human ethics boards that lends them comfort and uh, lends them appreciation for what we're trying to, um, to accomplish uh, within our studies in the ways in which Ethica fits into the, to the rubric of, um, of ethically uh, rig rigorously conducted uh, work. Okay? So we'll be seeing that um, in the course of this afternoon. But before you, um, you suffer those lectures from me, you'll be in uh, Muhammad's able hands. Okay? Thank you very much, and I will turn it over um, to uh, to, to Mohammed's guidance for the next uh, stage here. So we're just going to do a changing of the guard here, and uh, we'll get started with Mohammed's uh, uh, presentation. Uh, I guess one or two other, um, other items, um, just in terms of uh, administrivia. Um, I am posting successive uh, 